International Orchid Day. Woohoo! Welcome back. Welcome back to my video, but welcome back International Orchid Day. This day is for everyone that is nuts about orchids, but not just that. Maybe you're just starting out in the orchid hobby and don't understand why people go crazy over it. Well, all I can say is orchids have an international day specifically to commemorate and dedicate to what we do here and why we go bananas when we see an entire sea of bloom. So I appreciate your time. If you're not at an orchid show somewhere, you're here in southern Spain with me on my patio. And finally, I have a sunny day and I brought the whole gaggle of orchids out that are in bloom. I have plenty to show you, so let's just start and get into it. First of all, tucked away because of lack of space in the staging area, I don't have all the pedestals, is my Ampuyacea pink dreamer. She is gorgeous. She is pest free. Woohoo! And her pink pom-pom blooms are giving me a lot of joy because she is also blooming on time. Not a fragrant orchid, but who needs that with colors like that? <laughs> Charming chrysaline blooms. Just gorgeous. And then we can move into what's living right next to her on the staging area is my Kiyoguchi Happy Field. Oh my goodness, she's back in bloom. I did not think she was going to bloom. She has less blooms than she did last year this time around, but blooms nonetheless that are highly, highly fragrant. They smell of one of my most favorite perfumes, Ise de Miyaki perfume, and I believe it's called O de Ise Miyaki. And I have to tell you, there is no other way than to describe the perfume of these tiny, tiny blooms. The fragrance is such as not only remarkable, but it is in incredibly beautifully elegant. I love it. And then what you see peeking out in the back, tall and proud, is my Lelia Flava. In full bloom now. Well, maybe we have one bud to go, but ah, first time bloomer for me. So happy to see this spike and it is not broken. Just like my spike of my Lelia Alvarenguensis, very long, very precarious spike, but not broken either and in full bloom. Going over, but I'm not going to miss this opportunity to showcase my Lelia Harpophila on International Orchid Day. She has been in bloom for so long, meaning almost two and a half months now, being one of my favorite little ridiculous Lelias, even though the blooms are going over. She is part of my display because, my goodness, she deserves it. I love this orchid so much. Blooms going over means, though, that we are going to be anticipating some new growth soon. Peeking out from beyond the ridiculous Lelias are all my Tolumnias that are currently in bloom. I've got Tolumnia pomegranate branching and blooming on those two branches. I don't see any weaker blooms on the branching either, just as big and just as bright as they were on the first flush of blooms out of the end of the spike. And then I have next to that pink beige. Big blooms, almost as big as the pomegranate blooms, two spikes and two of the spikes are each branching. And next to that is little firm white. Also two spikes and both of them are in bloom with their first flush of blooms. But I don't want to miss out on the one that is tucked way over to the right just because she is way over to the right, almost obstructed from view by the Colmenara Masai Red. That is my pink brished. Not to be confused with the pink beige because the pink beige is a little bit dirtier around the petals and the bloom is much bigger. So pink brished is a little bit smaller in bloom and the petals they stay nice and clean and white even as the bloom ages. So let's go back down to the staging area because there's so much more to see. A little epidendrum cross that is Capricorn Nu crossed with M. Rain. Very difficult to film these blooms. You can see the spike is pendant. It is a sequential bloomer, however. She is not fragrant, but she has such delicate apricot orangey colors about her as the buds are swelling up. It's more of a blood orange orange as opposed to you get to the apricot orange when the blooms open. Not very long lasting blooms, but the display as such is long lasting because of the sequential blooming characteristic of the spike. 
When we look into orange, I have a surprise blooming of my Mirme Catavola Francis Fox. I say surprise because these blooms developed over the darkest weeks in my grow space while it was cloudy, miserable and cold outside. Needless to say, the bloom on the right is already fading. That was pretty quick. It lasted about a week. The bloom on the left, I never even expected that bud to open because it took forever to open. The colors aren't as vibrant as they would be if this spike had bloomed out during the summer. But there's a different kind of orange charm to her, a dirty, a vintage kind of orange charm to her with this blooming that I see for the first time. And well, it has given me the opportunity to get to know my Frances Fox a little better, seeing the detail and the change of the colors based on when she blooms out. Right in the back, a single bloom of my Vonara Fan Thursday is holding on. Everybody else has bloomed out in the meantime, but this bloom is just, I don't know. It is not plastic, it is for real, but it's looking as fresh as it did three days after it opened. We can get in a little bit further now because in the back is my Darwinara Blue Charm. Another surprise spike that I'm very, very pleased about because this orchid I thought needed a lot more light to bloom. And guess what? She didn't bloom for me last summer. And here she is having developed a spike through the darkest and coldest months of the year and is now blooming in her Neo Phoenicia Styli blooms. Very reminiscent of my Neo Stylus Loose Neary Blue. Same color and the fragrance. Oh, well. Welcome Neo season eventually, but for now I have the Neo Phoenicia Falcata fragrance. And you know what? It hasn't even been sunny and she's fragrant. Beautiful light citrus fragrance throughout the day. We can zoom in now and move to a big Paphia Petalum that is a no ID in my case, but I think it's an American hybrid. It is a rescue from yesteryear, and this year it gave me one bloom. That bloom has also lasted for ages. It is starting to look a little tired on the hood. I get that. Still, it is looking pretty and deserves to be in this display for International Orchid Day. When we go a little bit lower, we can see another Paphiopedalum. This is Paphiopedalum Iona and her blooms opened before the American Hybrid opened and they are still looking gorgeous. Now with the temperatures maybe going up a notch, she's going to probably drop her blooms within the next seven days, but just in time for International Orchid Day, Paphiopedalum Iona belongs onto my display table. We can now zoom into a gorgeous Phalaenopsis species, which is my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. She's doing really well, very happy with this orchid, developed her spike as well during the cold, dark months, did not blast any buds, yay! Very pleased about that, I can tell you, it was a testing, testing time. And then she also has that gorgeous rose garden kind of fragrance. Very happy to have this orchid in bloom, looking so healthy. Cattleya intermedia is going over, but the center of her, the lip and the column, everything there is so, so pristine and white. I wanted to feature her for this day, even though her days are numbered. She is still very, very beautiful in my eyes and an orchid in bloom, even if the bloom is aging, well, it has to be celebrated in my books. There's another rescue on Cidium that I did not know what it was when I bought it. It wasn't in bloom, but this turns out to be a Melissa Brianne. It is not the dark variety because the lip is more white. The dark variety has a lip that is more solid in color and doesn't have that color break, that waterfall feature. Very, very fragrant. She has a sweet fragrance and just as pungent as honeysuckle. What a trooper she's been. She has survived my winter and still bloomed out for me. Absolutely amazing because I have to tell you that the number of blooms on these spikes go against anything and everything that the weather had available for this orchid while she was growing out her spikes. And it is wonderful to see the bees busy around my blooms. As I'm chatting through all the orchids, I can see the bees busy around my blooms and I'm trying to keep track of any possible cross-pollination that might be happening. If we may see a seed pod further down the season, <laughs> because 
Yeah, I don't mind seed pods, but I'd like to know who went where. <laughs> you can say at least I've got a record of that. <laughs> anyway, speaking of bees, Cooksonianum. That would be the Dendrobium nobile variety Cooksonianum that is blooming beautifully for the first time for me here on my terrace. Gorgeous, gorgeous rose garden fragrance as well. Not very obvious, but once you get close and stick your nose in the bloom, it is pretty strong. It's not like she commands the space, so to speak. You can't smell her unless you get close, but then you have no doubt that you're smelling a beautiful rose garden. We can also get in a little bit closer on beautiful Dendrobium Roy Tokonago. Those blooms just light up when the sun hits them. Gorgeous. Not fragrant, but still super, super interesting and very, very long lasting. These spikes have now been open about four weeks and not showing any signs of aging. I still have a few more buds to go, so this orchid will be around if nothing goes wrong, if nobody drops it, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> note to self, for another six weeks at the minimum. Dendrobium nobili variety Cooksonianum was my second Dendrobium nobili, being a species, she's the fancy one. My first ever Dendrobium nobili is one that I don't have an identification for. I think I know what it is, but I am loath to say it just in case I'm wrong. But still, she was a rescue as well, and she has absolutely now grown unto her own and is performing in my climate the way a nobly should, blooming on the canes of the previous season that are strong and the height of the canes as when I bought her. We have gone through the entire cycle of the stress cakeys, the entire cycle of acclimating this orchid, and here she is now, three years later, doing what a nobly does best, blooming profusely on every single node, not only that, but on nodes that she missed out last year. Gorgeous, gorgeous freesia fragrance. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy this Dendrobium nobili, even though she's a commercial nobili. Her fragrance is obvious in the air, and that is why I mentioned that the Cooksonianum is not. You have to get close to appreciate the fragrance. With a no-ID nobili, there is no doubt who's playing in the blooming alley at this moment. Divine. If you like the fragrance of freesias, <laughs> this one nails it. I am not going to ignore my beautiful complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. I've got Bubblicious, the big lip fell in bloom. Love this orchid. She is the first one that showed me the success of transitioning from bark to leka. She was my prototype when I had thought I had figured it out. I wasn't 100% sure, but she is the prototype and from there on in, I think I know what I'm doing when it comes to transitioning complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, which was always rather a brain scratch for me. And then I've got Bubba right next to her. So these two belong together, possibly also called Champion Lightning. I call her Bubba because my daughter insisted on having this orchid and she is Bubba 3.0 having addressed a little bit my transitioning from bark to leka issues three times a charm and here's the result baba is in bloom even though not with many blooms she is in bloom and well established now in her pot next to her is a phalaenopsis that i call walter after the gentleman who gifted it to me the first year that he spent his summer in our home i told him afterwards this is a one and done gift thank you i so appreciate it not that i don't want more it's just that these orchids get so big and I don't have the space. So this is my one and done, and it'll be nice to see him again, and hopefully this orchid will still be in bloom when he comes back after all these years of not being here because of the global interference of the cooties. Now you may think, well, hang on a second, you've missed some and you're right. They don't fit on this staging area. <laughs> it's a great problem to have. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is take my complex hybrids back into the shade because intermittently I've been touching the leaves. I don't want them to heat up one bit. And then we're going to look at the ones that did not fit on this staging area. I'll be right back. There you go, yin yang, his or hers, depending on how you want to see it. Looking a little bit worse for wear, but still, these two orchids 
cousin it, Maxillaria variabilis, and my Dendrobium berry oda. They deserve to be featured on International Orchid Day, seeing as they give me so much joy, and, well, they are in bloom. If you've made it this far, thank you so very, very much. It was a great pleasure for me to be able to celebrate this day with just blooms. The fruits of our labor, so to speak. If you would like to know how International Orchid Day all started, please feel free to go into my description. I will link my video from last year where I explain a little bit about the history of how this day came about, where we can celebrate not just our hobby, but our blooms and everything else that orchids bring to our lives. Should you choose to watch my video from last year, let me just put it out there. It is raw, but it will explain the two glasses of wine and shortly the single glass of wine that is still full. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful International Orchid Day, whether you're watching it on the day or any time in the future. I will attach a condition to that though, that you please stay safe. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.